Welcome to the Shoemaker Center, a beautiful two-year-old facility on the campus of the University of Cincinnati. It seats just over 13,000. It looks as if we'll have a very nice crowd for tonight's ball game. As we said, Ron, evenly matched teams. The difference is in the statistics. East Tennessee shade a better shooting team, particularly for the free throw line. But you think the last two lines are the key lines. I think those are the key lines because, Terry, look at this. East Tennessee State averaging 92 points a game, while Cincinnati's only given up 64.4. It's going to be a battle to see who does their best thing tonight. But we're about to find out exactly what that might be. We're going to find out who the starting lineups are for both teams right now as we go to public address announcer Doug Kidd. Now the starting lineups first for East Tennessee State. Back forward, a 6'4 junior from Castlewood, Virginia. Number 24, Calvin Telford. Also at forward, a 6'3 junior from Greenville, Tennessee. Number 34, Marty Story. At center, a 6'8 sophomore from Gaffney, South Carolina. Number 31, Daryl Jones. At guard, a 6'1 senior from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Number 12, Major Gear. At guard, a 5'7 senior from Culpeper, Virginia. Number 22, Keith Jennings. And the head coach of East Tennessee State is Alan LaForce. And now the University of Cincinnati Bearcats. At forward, a 6'5 senior from Chicago, Illinois, number 20, Lavertis Robinson. Also at forward, a 6'4 junior from Atlanta, Georgia. Number 34, Herb Jones. At center, a 6'7 senior from Cincinnati. Number 42, Keith Stark. At guard, a 6'2 sophomore from South Bend, Indiana. Number 52, Alan Jackson. And it got a 6'5 senior from Camden, New Jersey, number 25, Lou Banks. The head coach of the Bearcats is Bob Huggins. We're just a couple of moments away from tip-off. We'll be back with the action right after this. By East Tennessee State, there are your starting lineups. Halford, Story, Jones, Jennings, and Gear for the Buccaneers, and Robinson, Jones, Starks, Jackson and Banks for the UC Bearcats. UC said to be a very physical team, and they certainly played a physical game in their win against Minnesota on Thursday night. The Buccaneers relying more on finesse. We'll see what happens. And it will be the Bearcats that will control the opening tip. That is Alan Jackson out top. He'll be checked by Mr. Jennings. East Tennessee State opening up in that real tough, aggressive man-to-man. -to -man. And Terry, you're going to see that both ways. Cincinnati will switch up in some multiple uh, pressing zone, man-to-man uh, -man, uh, traps and zone. That's Lou Banks. The pull-up jumper for Banks, who is the Bearcats' leading scorer. And they are on top two to nothing. The Buccaneers will start off with the three-pointer. That did not go the way they wanted at all. Major Gear having some problems from outside with the air ball, but the Bucks get it back and they'll set it up again. He's been really struggling, but the way to work out of a shooting slump if you're a shooter is Terry just keep shooting the basketball. Now, there's a guy that's not been struggling at all. Mr. Jennings does not get the roll this time. It goes over the back of the backboard and therefore will go to Cincinnati. What a terrific percentage Mr. Jennings has from three-point, like 79% he's shooting from the three-point line. Listen, everywhere he's shooting from the floor, he's shooting 79% from the three. That's got to be one of the best in the country. And I think maybe number three, but the other two people aren't shooting very many. That's right. They've not shot as many. Number one has only shot six, and number two has only shot ten. And there is the steal by Darrell Jones. And Mr. Jennings will bring it up, and they'll try and set it up again. Here on the right side, working against Alan Jackson, who has a couple of inches on him. Story 
with the move on Herbert Jones, and he'll be called for the offensive foul. Well, you're going to see that. They're going to do a lot of those type of things. Jumping in, help side defense. They're going to jump in and help on the drive to the bucket, and you're going to see right here some good defense. Bobby Hutton, one of the great coaches as far as defensive intensity in the country. It is an extremely active defense, isn't it, Ron? Oh, boy, they just really do a lot of nice things. They will trap. They'll do some zone trapping, but they really rely on their defense to win basketball games. Banks taking it right to the hole to get his own rebound. <laughs> and Starks comes up with the rebound himself and banks it home. That's Keith Starks. What a, crowd seven senior. what a crowd here tonight, uh, and I think it's very important that East Tennessee State get off to a good start. These first five minutes are very critical, especially when you're playing on the road. You don't want to let the crowd get into it. They've been having great crowds here. Picked it up about 3,000. A lot of these programs are similar. East Tennessee State has really jumped their tennis up just like Cincinnati. Gear drives inside, and so far the Bucks are very cold from the field. Cannot get one to drop. The bucket from three-point range, Herbert Jones. Boy, Allen, of course, probably wants to wait on that uh, TV timeout, but he might have to call a timeout, especially if East Tennessee State can't score right here and Cincinnati does on the other end. I said it was a three-pointer. His foot was over the line. It was a two-pointer, so it is 6-0 Cincinnati. Jones will fly, and he can't get it to drop. Here come the Bearcats. Herbert Jones under the basket. Cincinnati. And the Buccaneers have to get something going quickly. The crowd really getting into it now. Mr. Jennings drives at the pull up. Calvin Calford for three. And Alan Jackson rebounds for the Bearcats. Mr. Jennings thought he got that cleanly. The official says otherwise. That will be the first personal foul on Mr. Jennings and the first foul on East Tennessee State. Second team foul, pardon me, on East Tennessee State. Eight nothing against Cincinnati out to the early lead. And when you're a defensive team that emphasizes defense like Bobby Hudgens and Cincinnati team does, Listen, Terry, they're going to really steam up the pressure, especially on defensive end, but they're very happy with the, the quick start on the offensive uh, board. Allen LaForce uh, quickly trying to make a change to see if he can change the way the game's going as he puts in Jerry Pelfrey inside, replacing Darrell Jones. And if you see the battle underneath, it will be a held ball, a jump ball, and the arrow is pointing East Tennessee State's way, so the Buccaneers will get the ball pace this game's going to take on. You're going to see a lot of substitution tonight. Both coaches and uh, look here. Here we come again. Here comes gonna Alvin be, West. They're going to run them in and out all night both ways. Alvin West coming in in place of Calvin Talford. Allen the fourth said he'll use 10, 11, maybe 12 guys in this ball game. Steal for the Bearcats. Starts. And the foul against Mr. Jennings, his second personal foul. He picked up two very quickly. And that's the one thing you don't want to do. You do not. Look, look at this. It's a good foul. But, you know, when you're Mr. Jennings, that's a pretty good foul because he doesn't let him score. But let me tell you, when you get two fouls quickly on the main player, that's really going to be tough for him because a lot of coaches will have to sit players down when they get two in the first half. But uh, without Mr. Jennings, East Tennessee State is not a top 21 team. Starks hit the first free throw. Cincinnati, not a particularly good free throw shooting team. But you'd never guess it to watch P. Starks, and it is 10 to nothing. And the thing, if you're East Tennessee State now, you just take your time and try to ease your way back into it. And the trapping defense forces the turnover as Mr. Jennings goes to the floor. He went to the floor because he was pushed. He got a little bump there, and he lost the ball. And Allen LaForce is not very happy. He's got reason to be talking to Larry Ware. Cincinnati Bearcats leading in this ball game by a score of 10 to nothing. And they'll put in uh, their half-court offense. Herbert Jones all the way across court to Lavertis Robinson. Gets his man in the air, but misses the shot. Gets his own rebound. And he is traveling. It'll go back the other way. Rebounding one of Allen the Force's 
fears before this game. He says we cannot let them beat us on the glass. So far, it's happening. It is a timeout right now with 15.53 to go. Cincinnati 10, East Tennessee State nothing. We'll be right back. Look at the fast break here with Herbert Joe. Well, the reason why they're doing it is because they're creating a lot of turnovers, which Cincinnati does. But, hey, listen, Tennessee, East Tennessee State off to a horrendous shooting uh, uh, while East, uh, East Tennessee State's over five. Cincinnati four three. And there's that rebound statistic we talked about. Check this out, seven one, and, and you know you got to do those things if you're going to be in the game. And Jerry Pelfrey finally gets the Buccaneers on the board. He hits the three quarter. It is ten to three. Four and a half minutes gone in the ball game before the Bucs could get a basket. Yeah, but Terry, you know, as ugly as it seems, East Tennessee State just needs to take their time. They can get back in it. And right now, they're sitting in a zone. It looks like a 2-3. And they're going to force Cincinnati to shoot the ball from outside and slow them down just a little bit. Well, Cincinnati's not known as a good shooting team from the perimeter. They're averaging about 45% from the field. And right there... You see the missed basket by Lou Banks inside. Oh, that's a real good move to go to that zone out of the timeout, I think, by LaForge. Pelfrey with the same shot, <laughs> identical oh. three-pointer. Hey, he said, hey, listen, I'm, I'm part of that famous Pelfrey family. <laughs> My brother John plays over at uh, Kentucky. I had him a few weeks ago in the game. Let me tell you something. Those are two pretty shots. They're going to have to respect him. That's Jackson from outside. And there you have three bucks crashing the board. It's a jump ball, but that is what Alan LaForce wants to see. Oh, man, look, listen, right out of the timeout, we quickly come in East Tennessee State. I guess say, yeah, just takes a couple of shots, and they're right back in it. And Coach Bob Huggins for Cincinnati is going to make a substitution, get a little more size in the lineup. He starts at 6'7", goes to the bench. And Jeff Scott, a junior college transfer, 6'10", 230 pounds, comes into the ball game. And you see out on the fourth, uh, talking things over a little bit. Cincinnati will inbound under the basket. And that is Lavertis Robinson with the jump shot from the baseline. First basket of the game for Robinson. It is 12-6. Jeff Scott is not going to let Pelfrey have an uncontested three-pointer. Jump shot is off. Rebounded and hit by Alvin Weck. That's a nice follow that time. They got a good break on the bucket. Uh, the, the ball hit the uh, back of the rim and came right off, and Alvin West was right there for the putback. That's Robinson inside. He goes to Banks. Robinson almost brings the rim down. <laughs> Hey, he crashed the boards for real on that well, play. He kept it alive. Scott misses, gets his own rebound, and follows. Well, Terry, that's one thing that you can't do, and that's I know at least three times that's happened in the first half. they got to check the shooter. The shooter's getting his own rebound. That's a that no-no. That is the seventh offensive rebound for UC. And the Buccaneers on the other end remain cold from the field. Here comes Marty's story into the game. And Rodney English will go out. Also checking back in Calvin Calvert, and he will replace Major Gear. You know, the thing about Cincinnati, about a third of their scoring is created off of turnovers. They want to play an up-tempo game. They're not very smart offensively. I think East Tennessee State, if they just limit them to one shot, they'll be in better shape. East Tennessee still in the zone. Banks underneath to Robinson. Alvin West comes up with Calvert drives the lane to Pelfrey and he's hammered underneath. A great transition there. As you see, the shot was created by the intense move inside. You're going to see on replay. Look at here we go inside. The penetration is what got the pass open, and there's Pelfrey. He gets fouled once and a block right there, but he got the foul. But all of that was created because of the fact that you had good penetration by Calvin Talbot. And Keith Stark's back in the ball game now for the UC Bearcats. Jerry Pelfrey is money at the bank at the free throw line, 90% for the line, and there he is. 18 of 20 for the year, now 19 of 21. Terry, maybe you could tell me this. Is this the Pelfrey family that also had a girl that played for Marshall University? No, it's a different, uh, it's a different Pelfrey. Her name Karen Pelfrey, and she is Marshall's all-time leading scorer for men or women. <laughs> he definitely has good genes because his brother's a fine player at Kentucky. The 
Bucks are back in it. They've got the lead to four at 14 to 10. Perhaps the switch to the zone defense made a difference. There's the steal. Good defensive effort there by Jackson on Alvin West, but West will go to the free throw line. Good steal by Alvin West. Terry, I think the thing that really uh, the zone did was it controlled the tempo just a little better because Cincinnati, you're going to see, good step in. Look at that step in. Alvin West is going to take it all away. He's going to get fouled. But the defense helped East Tennessee State to get a little more control of the game. And there you see the reach in. Just got a little bit of the arm. But that was enough to send Alvin West to the free throw line. Misses the first of two. Checking into the ball game now for Cincinnati is Herbert Jones, and he'll replace Lavertus Robinson. Herbert Jones, what a story. Herbert Jones, one of the finest players in America. Juco All-American two times. And Bob Gibbons, the guru of recruiting and scouting for uh, college basketball coaches, had him rated last year in the top five, five Juco players in America. I'll tell you, he really does a great job on this Cincinnati team of being where the ball is, offensively, defensively, rebounding. If you find the ball, you're probably going to find him. And right there, he hits the three-pointer. That's the guy we're talking about, Herbert Jones. Herbert Jones, he said, I'm going to make you look good over there, Terry and Ron. We talk about him, he buries the three. He sure did. Bucks had the numbers for a moment. They'll go from outside instead, and big Jeff Scott brings down the rebound for the Bearcats. Down quickly to Jackson, who misses the three. Follows his own shot, misses again, and there's Jerry Pelford. Got to check out those shooters. Come on, Buccaneers, check those shooters out. Don't let them get their own rebound. Pelfrey takes it to the hole and draws the foul. Jerry Pelfrey, also a real good start off the bench, and Scott, the man who's guarding Jeff Scott, is a transfer from Cal uh, California Santa Barbara. But you're going to see a good fake right here. Good fake, good step there, and he draws the penetration, and he's able to get to the free throw line. And again, at the free throw line, he's as close to automatic as it gets. There's Bob Huggins, the UC head coach, came in here, did a terrific job last year, led him to a 20-win season, and the NIT. Curtis Robinson checking back in, and Mr. Jennings going over to check with Allen the fourth. See what he wants him to do. You saw Jerry Pelfrey's season average of 7.1 points per game. He already has now nine points in this ball game. And we are not yet 10 minutes into the game. Pelfrey misses the free throw. That's a rarity. It is 17-12. UC leading ETSU. ETSU extending that zone just a little bit because of the shooting ability, especially of Mr. Herbert Jones. Terrence Gibson into the game now for UC. Pelfrey slapped it away. And the Buccaneers come down with it. Hey, you know the thing about it, you extend that zone because you know what? That's where they want to shoot. They're not that real strong inside, Terry. So again, good coaching move by the East Tennessee State coaching staff. Tennessee State now trying to work it around the perimeter. And there's the three-pointer for Alvin West. Six points now for West, and it's a two-point ball game, 17 to 15. That's what really makes for great basketball. You've got a team like East Tennessee State off to a slow start. But listen, as badly as they played early, they're just a bucket behind. And you see really having problems getting it inside against that zone. There's the three-pointer by Jones, and he's way off the mark. It'll be Buccaneer basketball when we come back, but we have a timeout on the floor right now. Ten minutes and 28 seconds to play in the first half. The Bucs are within two at 17-15. East Tennessee State, once down by 10, has climbed back to within two. One reason, the sagging zone defense, Ron. Well, that's a real good job by Pelfrey there to slap it away from Robinson. But look at here on the other end. East Tennessee State is kicking it up a little the higher gear on the offensive end also. They've hit three of seven from the three-point line. That's helped them get back into the ball game. Still getting beaten badly on the boards, 14 to five. Cincinnati controlling most of those offensive rebounds, but there's the guy that helped them come back. Pelfrey with his third three-pointer of the ball game, and 
it is now an East Tennessee State lead, 18 to 17. Bearcats work it to the right side, now inside to Robinson, who will shoot the 15-footer. Whistle underneath, and the foul will go against, I believe, Keith Stark. That is correct. Keith Stark called for the person. But the game ended right now, Jerry. Who would you give the player the game to? <laughs> I think that would be an easy decision. I'll tell you, Mr. Pelfrey's doing it on both ends for uh, Allen the fourth. <laughs> Uh-oh, we're talking about Jerry, and he turns it over. Yeah. 12 points so far from a guy who averages 7.1, and we are just about halfway through the first half. Not a bad game so far for Jerry Pelfrey. That's Keith Starks. Gibson into Robinson, open for the jumper. And once again, the offensive rebound for the UC Bearcats. That is their ninth offensive rebound of this ball game. This time, Calvin Calford will go up and bring down the miss by Gibson. That was the East Tennessee State concern. There's another turnover. Pelfrey couldn't get a handle on it, but that was a concern. The offensive rebounding was a concern of LaForce before the game started. Lavertis Robinson converts the fast break bucket. That'll give UC the lead back at 19-18, and they're going to put on the defensive pressure. East Tennessee State will counter the pressure by backing off and letting Mr. Jennings do his thing against Terrence Gibson. Bob Calper kicks it back out. Nice pass, but the air ball from West. And I believe the foul on the rebound will go against Jerry Pelfer. That was a good kick out pass. He did shoot an air ball, but boy, what a play. Did you see the the uh, you see the philosophy of a Bobby Hudgens, don't you? You watch his team, they're very sound defensively, but they also attack the glass. And that was one of the things that concerned Alan Sports going into the game as he talked to us. He did not want to give up offensive rebounds to Cincinnati, but they've been attacking that glass every time they're on their offensive board. As we said, nine offensive rebounds. Six of their points have come on second chance baskets. They go right inside to Robinson, who has the height advantage, but has missed three straight from the 10 to 15 foot range. And Mr. Jennings will bring nice it up. Pass. Nice pass inside. The basket will not go. Rodney English trying to get that five footer to drop. Now Robinson will try again. This time he hits it. You see a lot of their points are going to come in transition. They'll get the boards and they'll go, or they'll get a turnover and they'll go. But when they make it when they're set, if they'll just reduce the offensive glass, they'll be in good shape. Marty Story called for the foul there, and frankly, I'd have to see the replay to understand why. I didn't see much contact. It is 21-18, UC leading ETSU. We have seven minutes and 55 seconds to play in the first half, and we'll be right back. It is 21-18, Cincinnati leading East Tennessee State. Those 18 points all scored by two players. Jerry Pelfrey with 12 of them, and uh, Alvin West with the other six. Both of them came off the bench. So, Ron, the starters have not scored a point yet for East Tennessee State. That's, that's something that's just totally unbelievable. I'm sure they'll crank it up here in a minute. English trying to control the rebound, and I believe he stepped on the end line or bounced the ball on the end line, so it will stay down at the UC end of the court. Couldn't quite get the handle on the rebound there, and uh, he bounced it on the line. Alan Jackson will come into the ball game replacing Terrence Gibson. Jackson, a 6'2 sophomore. He's a junior college transfer, but only played one year at that junior college. And so he is a sophomore, not a junior. Alley oop! Lavertis Robinson went way up for that one. And believe me, that got the crowd into the ball game. Five point UC lead. Boy, he did. <laughs> he elevated her up for that one. I tell you, he was climbing. <laughs> Story slipped as he tried to go around Robinson on the baseline. He's trapped. It'll stay at the East Tennessee State end. But you notice the defense coming to him. They'll trap in the corners right there. They'll trap out front with the point guard, and they, they love to do that. 
Take a look oh, at this alley you. Oh, unbelievable. It's going to get up there. The pass. You know, something, though, the defense was right up there with him, but he was able to climb over and get the, uh, get the great pass into the bucket. While we were in the replay, the Buccaneers got a bucket, and so it is 23 to 20. Sugar Man free underneath. So again, a three-point ball game, and you see once again trying to work it in against that Buccaneer zone on the other end. And showing pretty good patience against the Buccaneer zone. Herbert Jones almost lost the handle, got it back. Now he'll fire from the baseline. Air ball. A good hustle by Calvin Palford to come up with a loose ball for the Bucs. Jump shot by Gear won't go. And Lou Banks called for the foul. He says, you got to be kidding. I didn't do anything. You're going to see Major Gear. Look at this basketball. Oh, boy. All the way around the rim. Got all the color of the rim right there. You know, the thing about a Major Gear is you're a shooter. You're a deluxe shooter. You just keep firing him up. You know something, Terry? Early in the season, I'm sure he's going to work out of it. He's too good a player. We've seen him too many times in Southern Conference games. So far, he's one for four tonight. If he begins to think about it, he's going to be one for nine, one for ten. He needs to just keep shooting. And Allen, the fourth, I'm sure, is an encouraging him to do it. Pelfrey that time got caught in the air with nothing to do but try and fire it up. Here come the Bearcats. Robinson working one-on-one, -on -one, and he hits it. Lavertus Robinson starts to heat up for the Bearcats. Ten points for him. I think that's where they're at their best defense and also in transition. They're going to score in transition. Well, the fans won't like that call, but they did not give Calvin Palford any room to operate. New Banks gets called for his second personal. Bob Huggins doesn't like that at all. Bob Huggins taking his coat off. He really was aggravated. Look at that. Going to trap right there in the corners. Could have gone, could have gone either way, but you're going to see it from a different angle. Let's see if we can see right here. Look at Great. the pass. That's the Pelfrey. Oh, 
what a great cut. But a great pass from Calvin Talbert to a Jerry Pelfrey cutting down the open lane. It's a one-point game, 27-26. This game is taking on the top billing. It's exactly what we thought it was going to be going into the game tonight. Thanks. And once again, the offensive rebound, but this time Banks travels and he goes to the floor. Calvin Talford, Calvin, you've got to block that man out or you've got to chase to the boards and get that rebound. Can't let these people get the offensive glass. Jennings will bring it up against Jackson. There's the trap. But the foul is called against Blue Bank. You know what? You watch this. It's a basketball game, and you see one exciting little thing. On the first pass, every time, Cincinnati is trapping wherever the pass goes. And it's been very effective for him, too. And if you're a and if you're a Buccaneer, you just say, hey, you know you're going to get trapped on that first pass, and so you got to be very careful. And that time, uh, they were able to dribble out of the uh, trap and pick up the foul. Major Gear goes to the free throw line, hits the first. So what I'm saying is, you just sit here and just figure it out. You just figure it out. You see, they're trapping on the first pass, and uh, you just know that's what they're going to be doing. Banks goes out of the ball game. That was his third personal foul. And that's the key. He is the leading scorer, certainly for UC, coming in to replace him as Terrence Gibson. You know what? Lou Banks is off to a real slow start. He's the leading scorer on the team, but he only has two in the first half of the game. Major Gear hits both free throws, and the Buccaneers are back on top for the second time in this ball game at 28-27. Just over four minutes to play in the first half. Another very amazing thing for East Tennessee State. Mr. Jennings picked up those two early fouls. He's been able to avoid that third one. Robinson can't hit from 15. Rebound by Jackson. Robinson. Oh, that's a foul. That's over the back foul. And that'll be a oh. foul against Calvin Palfer. What? If you see the replay on this, that's a terrible, terrible mistake or a bad call because Miss Talford is going to get that ball because it would have been a backcourt, but they got the foul instead. And they will therefore get the basketball when we come back. 3.51 to play. Buccaneers are up by one. Stick with us. Ron, Mr. Jennings only has two points in the game, but that doesn't mean he's not contributing. Look here. Oh, he's active. He came up with a steal, but watch the pass. He's going to kick it out of there against the pressure, but watch Jerry Pelford. He's going to pass the ball, and then he's going to cut down the open lane. Oh, nice pass. Good play, especially about Pelfrey, to recognize the open lane. It's just textbook basketball right there. The old give and go, they used to call that. That's right. Buccaneers still getting killed on the boards. More than a two-to-one margin. Robinson couldn't find the handle. Nice Alford. pass. And Alan Jackson wasn't going to let him slam the ball on him. That's a great lead pass by Mr. Jennings. <laughs> he said, Robinson what? Really didn't think the ball was coming to him. He's trying to catch that ball with his armpit. But look at this. Great lead pass by Mr. Jennings. And Calvin just barely missed getting a three-point attempt. He will get to go to the line to shoot a couple of free throws. What a great athlete this guy is. Four, what is that? Four sports all-stater? I tell you, I don't know very many people that, you know, to letter would be a great achievement, oh, yeah. but when you're an all-stater in four sports, that just tells you the kind of athlete Calvin Talbot really is. Terrific long jumper, terrific high jumper, played minor league baseball. East Tennessee State committed since the early minutes of the game to this zone defense. Been in it since the five-minute mark. And it has been effective. It is probably the reason that they are back to a 30-27 to lead. Starks will try it from 15 and get it. Got people on the floor. They need to run. See, no. Nope. Bearcats were able to get back up on transition. Alvin West had an ocean to go from three. Let it go. Halford will shoot. Would have been a two-pointer had it gone. Bearcats still controlling the board. Allen Jackson misses. This time, Halford will come down with it. The Buccaneers have the numbers if they can get it down court. Story pulls it back to Mr. Jennings. 
Three-pointer for Keith Jennings. Pretty good transition defense by Cincinnati. They stopped Alvin West, but in doing so, they gave the three-pointer on the kickout to the mister. And you do not want to give him a three-point <laughs> opportunity. Oh, what a great player. What a great kid. I, you know, I live down in the uh, northern part of Georgia. I just love these Buccaneer kids. Great kids, good students, and just fine athletes. season when they started oh, nine one. And you know who's coming up now. Look at him. Look at the shooting. East Tennessee State was off to a slow start, but now they kicked it up. And you know who's coming to Johnson City next. North Carolina State. And Les Robinson, isn't that going to be something? That's going to be not only a game. Hey, listen, Terry, that's going to be an event. You and Randy Smith will be televising that game, and I guarantee you that one's going to be fun. About 12,000 people there, maybe. And there's still tickets available, but, boy, if you're going to go to that game, you better be doing some talking and get over to the <laughs> ticket office. That's right. We've got a pretty good game going on right here. Lavertus Robinson misses. He hasn't done that very often tonight. Nice Alley pass. Pass. Great pass. Rodney English gets the slam, but give Mr. Jennings half the credit. Oh, what a, what a game of spurts. Exactly. I mean, East Tennessee State was down 10-0 at the five-minute mark, and now they've just kicked it back. They lead by six with 134 left in the half. It is amazing how the game can turn. Take a look at this alley-oop. This is a great pass. Oh, what a pass. Look at the mister. He just said, hey, it's just another day at the office. And boom, we go up big time. Rodney English, Denmark, South Carolina's contribution to the Buccaneers is able to get the stuff. You know, we talked about Mr. Jennings averaging 18.5 points a game, the leading scorer on the Buccaneer team. And, and he has not had that good a night offensively in terms of scoring with only five points and three of those coming on the one shot. However, he's made the passes. He's made the steal. He's the kind of guy that's going to help you one way or another. Hey, listen, I, I coached for 10 years, Terry, and I can tell you right now, you've got to have those big guys like Greg Dennis. you got to have those great athletes like Alonzo Mourning. Listen, you better have yourself a smart, good little point guard if you're going to have a good basketball program. And we're going to take a look at uh, Keith Jennings one more time. Good defense. They stop story, but he kicks it out, and the mister buries it. Again, he uh, came into this game 79% from the three-point line. That puts him third in the country in that percentage. Three-point shooting, a key part of the ball game for the Buccaneers. Five three-pointers to UC's one, but you would expect that. Better catch, don't shoot many of them, the Bucks do. Yeah, but I think the uh, Buccaneers zone defense has really been good on the uh, perimeter shots. That was Michael Joyner with the three-point attempt there for UC. He is a guy that's not seen that much playing time for the Bearcats, brought in in situations exactly like this, where they need somebody to try and shoot from outside. That's his specialty. The only areas of the game that Cincinnati has really been dominant in in the first half has been the fact that they've got a lot of second attempts at the bucket and, and, and the fact that they've really done a good job as far as transition is concerned. But you take that away, Terry, and the Buccaneers have done a good job of doing that, especially with the zone. Lavertis Robinson at the line has 12 points in this ball game so far, all from the field. He's 6 of 12 from the field. And that one rattles in and out. And going up for the rebound is English. Mr. Jennings had about a 30-second breather and is back in the ball game. Just over a minute to play in the first half. Cincinnati in a little zone now. I think they're conceding the fact that they're not going to be able to play this man for the whole 40 minutes, you know. So far, the matchups haven't worked for him. Pelfrey off the mark that time. But there's Alvin West to come up with the rebound. Kick it back out to Mr. Jennings. Shot clock and the game clock almost exactly in sync. A one-second difference. So the Bucks can work it for essentially the last shot of the first half if they so choose. Pelford, three-pointer. And the Bearcats come up with the rebound. That's Jeff Scott. And they'll have 19 seconds to do something with it. The shot clock is off. 
35-29, East Tennessee State with the lead. They'd love to take that lead into the locker room. Robinson from 15 hits it. Robinson with his 14th point of the game. And the Bucs cannot get a shot off before halftime. East Tennessee State starts the game with a 10-point deficit down 10. Nothing at halftime, though. They have a four-point lead. It is 35 to 31. We'll be back right after this. Buccaneers are shooting well below their norm, only 38%. They're getting killed on the uh, boards, as we said before, 25 to 14. They do have 10 more free throw attempts and have eight, uh, made eight more free throws. But the key statistic, Ron, they're ahead on the scoreboard. Yes, and, and not only that, they've uh, done a better job in three-point circle. And a key stat there for me is with the intensity defensively Cincinnati puts on a team, they've only turned the ball over seven times. And to me, that's a big, big statistic. And I would bet most of those came in the first eight minutes of the ball game when they trailed 10 to nothing. Well, that's a turnover right there off of Marty Story, but that's one of those unforced turnovers. He dribbles the ball off his foot out of bounds. Story, Palford. Mr. Jennings, Major Gear, and Darrell Jones, who played the first couple of minutes of the ball game, and we did not see him again in the first half. That's the starting five for East Tennessee State. That's Lavertis Robinson with the fall away. Herbert Jones with the rebound. Interesting to see East Tennessee State opening a man when the zone had been so successful. And also wonder how long those uh, bench uh, people will sit on the bench especially after they made such a big contribution in the first half. I suspect not long, particularly if Lavertis Robinson continues to hit. He had 14 first half points, gets his 16th point, and it's a two-point ball game. Major gear out top, now Jennings over to Talford. Drive and the layup. <laughs> Bobby Huckins is up. He's not happy with the officiating. He's not happy with that kind of defensive effort. Calvin Talford just flew past the baseline man. He made that look extremely easy. I thought he was going to dunk that one. I did, too. I think perhaps he was surprised that he was so open. <laughs> I believe you're right there. I'm a little disappointed he didn't because he can be awfully sensational when he dunks the basketball. He can indeed. Alan Jackson shot claims off the front rim, but Lou Banks is there with the follow. Banks with only two points in the first half. He averages over 18 a game, gets his second basket. It is 37-35. Banks sat out much of the first half with three personal fouls. Halford drives baseline again, but he stepped. No, he traveled. I thought he stepped on the line. The end result is the same. It is a turnover. But that's you're going to see Talford right to the hole. He was wide open, and that's the play we talked about before, but they have two turnovers here in this half, and also Cincinnati has had two shots and follows, and uh, that's a concern, I'm sure, of these Tennessee State uh, coaching staff. Buccaneers stay in the man-to-man, -man, and Jennings simply could not match up with Alan Jackson. Jackson gets the basket. It's a tie ball game. Calford hustles for the rebound, and this time, given a second chance, Major Gear hits. That's a great attempt to keep it alive. If you don't keep the ball alive on the offensive boards that time, uh, Major Gear's not going to have a, a chance to shoot himself out the slump. And now East Tennessee State back in the zone. Let's see if it has the same effect it did in the first half. It produces the turnover, threw it right to Calvin Calford. Jennings nice. inside. Darrell Jones can't handle it. A little bit behind it. Here comes Lou Banks. To Robinson slapped out of bounds. And it was Robinson, says the official, who so, last touched it. And so it'll be East Tennessee State's ball. And take a look at Bob Huggins. Boy, Bob Huggins. But look at this. Mr. Jennings does so many intangible. Look at that. He's going to reach right in there. And that's a good defensive play. He almost kicked the ball, but he's glad he didn't. And UC gets it right back. Here comes Banks against Jennings. Spins. And this is badly, but there's Keith Starks for the rebound. I uh, started to say air ball. It wasn't an air ball. I guess you call it a glass ball, but it was not a good shot. Got to be careful throwing that ball to Darrell Jones in the corner. 
Gear. Ah, the major. <laughs> major gear is beginning to heat up. That's his second three in a row. He may be about to shoot himself out of that slump. I tell you what. I tell you what he did. Uh, over on the bench just now, uh, Gibson, uh, or rather, excuse me, uh, Alvin West was set to come in, but after those two shots, he sat back down. He pulled him right back. Huh? He sat right back down. Robinson with the turnaround, air ball, and there starts again. Thanks. He'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. He got Darrell Jones into the air. Jones had nowhere to go except down on top of Banks. We're going to see it's awfully hard to play defense when you're up in the air. Tyrell goes up and he fouls a man. Man almost comes up with uh, possibly a bucket and a chance for a three. Lou Banks, really great player. Hey, his father is a minister. You know what? He's got 10 brothers and sisters. I tell you, that's a big family. I, I sure hope he's got a large church. <laughs> he probably got a large church as with his family. How many of you supposed to play basketball like him? <laughs> no, not very many. Not very many. This player in high school, hey, listen, Terry, 35 points a game. He played on the same high school in Camden, New Jersey. Milt Wagner was there, Billy Thompson, those Louisville stars, and, boy, what a heritage Lou Banks has. Now they're playing against each other in the Metro Conference. Banks misses both free throws. Rodney English is into the ball game for East Tennessee State. And I believe Mr. Jennings and uh, Rodney English perhaps just had a little lack of communication there. Mr. threw the ball. There wasn't anybody there to get it. We have 15.42 to play second half. And the East Tennessee State lead is four. We'll be back in the swoop. Ron Bishop, Major Gear has been in a shooting slump. Maybe he's shooting himself out of it. Well, this is a good... Uh, Calvin kept it alive, and he passes it right back. But again, a shooter has to work himself out of the slump by shooting the basketball. And he wasn't afraid to go right back, put it up again. East Tennessee State now 7 of 17 from the three-point line at the six-point differential. They're still getting hurt on the board, 29 to 16, the difference there. He credit coaching with that type of thing, though. Alan LaForce is gone with the man, even though he... Oh, my. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Calvin Calford <laughs> off the alley-oop from Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings just says, I'll throw it up as high as I can, and Calford will go up and get it. You don't think that wasn't called on the bench out of the timeout? That was a set play by Alan LaForce out of the timeout. I love it. Well, Good amazing, coaching. Amazing how quiet the crowd was on that, too. Herbert Jones with the baseline jumper. He is struggling offensively for UC. But to finish that point about Allen LaForce, you go with the shooter. You don't sit him down. You don't grab him. He misses a couple of shots. You don't put him on the bench. You got to go with him. Talford out top. A six-point East Tennessee State lead. That is their biggest lead of the ball game. Talford. It's good. That will be a two-pointer, not a three. Two-pointer for Calvin Calford, 47-39, and suddenly it's an eight-point lead. And the crowd at the Shoemaker Center urging their UC Bearcats to get back into it and get something going offensively. They have had trouble getting it in inside against that zone, though. LaFertis Robertson, a wild shot. A rebound shot. by English. Here comes Mr. Jennings. Nice. You. It is! <laughs> film. That's a highlight film play. I guarantee you Calvin Talford will provide you with plenty of highlights. A 10-point Buccaneer lead, biggest of the game. And I believe Talford will be called for the foul there against Alex Jackson. What's fixing to happen? Cincinnati. Bobby Huggins is preaching a little sermon on the sideline. He's going to bring in five new players and the crowd loves it. Going to bring in an entire new team. Take a look at that. Don't think those kids that started the game aren't getting a good little sermon right now. What just passed? He sees it right now, and look at this. This is a highlight film shot. Boy, look at Calvin Talbert elevate. And here come the Buccaneers. They have four on one. Talbert! He's called for the offensive foul. Michael Joyner got underneath him. The official says Joyner had position. Calford was uh, Calford was going up for dump number three. Oh, look at this. There is no way, Terry. There is no way. No. 
Not, not only did he not have the position, but he was off his feet as well. Look at Alan LaForce. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. Let's see if we can set the UC lineup for you, because as we said, they brought in a bunch of new folks. That's Terrence Gibson with the ball. First time that Bob Huggins has ever done that, substituted five guys. He's obviously not happy with his starters. There's Gibson, who plays much of the first half. He misses the follow shot by Curtis Bostick. But here come the Bucks. Calford. Can't get it to drop. The uh, East Tennessee State bench looking for goaltending. They're not going to get it. You know the thing that happens when you bring five kids off the bench like this? The crowd really gets into it. Look at this. Well, let's see if it's goaltending. It might be. Let's see. Maybe. Ah, the ball hit the rim. I don't know, but I'll tell you what. The crowd really loves it because of the fact that Bobby Huggins said, hey, we're sitting these starters down. They're stinking up Cincinnati. We're going to give these other kids a chance, and the crowd is back in it, although they're down by eight. Calford could get it back up to ten with the free throws, and Calvin Calford really, in the last five minutes, has played a huge part in uh, this East Tennessee State spurt. They got a boat. Calvin West coming in for the Buccaneers. He will replace Calford, who will get a breather. The guy inbounding the ball here for uh, UC is Michael Joyner. That's Curtis Bostick. Bostick to Gibson. Mike Reichenecker, big seven-footer in the game, along with Jeff Scott. So they have a seven-footer, and Scott at 6'10 inside. They're going to try and do it by going to the big man now. When I was coaching, I used to hate to see this kind of scenario because when those five get back and started the game, they're going to be breathing fire. Scott missed the jumper. There's West open for the jumper. Alvin West knocks one down. It is a 53-41 lead for East Tennessee State. At the end of tonight's game, we'll be selecting a Shoney's East Tennessee State player of the game. And right away it's going, it's going to be a tough decision. It really is. Several players have really contributed. you got to think about people like, uh, of course, Talford, Mr. Jennings. There are several that could be in there. Michael Joyner knocks down the three-pointer, his first basket of the game, only the second three-pointer for the Bearcats. He cuts the lead to nine. And you know, Jerry Pelfrey played such a good first half, has not seen very much time in the second. I believe Major Gear has ended his shooting slump. Major Gear, it's, it's a confidence factor. When he buried that first one, the other two strokes were easy. Three consecutive three-pointers for Gear. Now Huggins calls timeout. He's going to let everybody on the team know exactly how he feels about the way things are going. He'll bring some of his starters back in. With 11.58 to go in the game, the Buccaneers lead it by 12.50. Ron Bishop at the end of tonight's game will be selecting as shown he's East Tennessee State Player of the Game. Calvin Talford certainly making a, a bid to take that award. Take a look at that alley-oop. Hey, if you're going to talk about that, you also got to talk about that great pass to Mr. Then you got to think about Major Gear. What a big factor in the second half. And look at the bench scoring, and a lot of that, 14 of those points coming from Jerry Pelfrey, whom we've not even seen in the second half. Got all 14 in the first half. So Allen the Force using everybody, and so far, using them very well. Lou Banks trying to force it inside. It is slapped away, and Mr. Jennings comes up with the basketball. West with the drive. He will not get the roll. UC trying to look for the break. He couldn't find it. Banks to Joyner, who hit the three-pointer a little earlier. Lavertis Robinson and Lou Banks back in the ball game. Nice throw. Oh, how about Rodney English going up there? Rodney English says, I'm going to make this look easy. 56-44, Rod. Rodney English from uh, down in South Carolina and played very good uh, Juco ball down there in Anderson Junior College uh, for Steve Litt. And he's blended in very well with the team here. And he's got a lot more playing time, especially with the injury uh, to Greg Dennis. You see staying with the man-to-man -man defense. Nice drive inside, and it's Marty Story with the basket. 
That time Major Gill was able to work out of the trap. He found made a uh, uh, story right under the bucket. But again, the story of the game, I really believe, is moved by Allen LaForce to the zone. They've been committed to it, and it's really paid off for it. Well, the Bearcats, as we've noted a couple of times, not known as a good perimeter shooting team, and this zone has forced them to try and do that. Lavertis Robinson caught up call. The arrow pointing UC's way, so they'll maintain possession. That's a good call, though. He got the shot clock. He came down with it. Watch this. Good play inside. Whoa, what's Marty Story doing? He's playing defense with his backside. But look at the pass inside. Marty's got his backside right there. But look, we're going to get some help. And English is able to step in for the block. Well, they went inside once again to Robinson on the inbound pass. And this time he draws the foul and will go to the free throw line. Speaking of those coaches, Alan LaForce, Bobby Hogan, both okay, working their way up. LaForce coached at, uh, down in Charleston, South Carolina, at NAI school, had a good program. Bobby Huggins really started his coaching at Walsh College up in Ohio, and then went to, to uh, Akron. Came here from Akron, very successful coach. And I am really tickled to see Alan LaForce get his chance to coach these Buccaneers after following Les Robinson. And he had such a part in building the team. It's really not did. as if he simply inherited players he had nothing to do with. And we understand that the players really wanted him as a coach. They knew, and you, and you know something? A lot of times players get this funnel when a new guy comes in. But hey, this program is really close. Bobby Huggins, of course, at Cincinnati. Last year, 20 and 14, he was the coach of the year in the Metro and a second place finish. Best record they've had in 13 years. Gary Pelfrey now back in the ball game for the first time in the second half comes down with that rebound. Pelfrey 14 points in the first half off the bench. Nice. Couldn't get a handle on it. English couldn't get a handle on it, but look at here. Ooh, almost a steal. You know something? We talk about this Cincinnati Bearcat defense. I'm very impressed with the defensive intensity, even though they're playing zone of East Tennessee State Buccaneers. And if there's a significant difference between the team under Allen LaForce and the team under Les Robinson, it probably is that he emphasizes defense more. And a lot of intensity. These players play hard, and you like to see that. Joiner for three. Bounces it off the shot clock, and that will turn it over to East Tennessee State. Hey, something from a coaching standpoint, Terry, if you can get players, you see Bobby Huggins uh, applauding his team, if you can get good, talented players to play hard, I really think that that's the key for a coach to be successful. See him attract. They really, they really attack you at half court. Good hustle by Pelfrey. This time the three-pointer bangs in and out. English with the follow. Alfred slaps it all the way back out to Mr. Jennings, and the Buccaneers will start all over again. Pelfrey was hammered that time by Robinson, who got a little overzealous on the defense. I think that's a frustration. Boy, Bobby Huggins really on their case. And you know something? When you're emphasized defense, watch this foul. Boy, they're going to really come at him. Passes inside to Pelfrey. Watch this. Boom. Well, it was an aggressive foul, and I suspect most coaches <laughs> would prefer an aggressive foul. If you have to foul, they just assume you're not foul. I think it's a frustration. Boy, they, they're just really frustrated because East Tennessee State is really scored at their pace. And, uh, you know, the defense in the first half for Cincinnati was pretty good. But, boy, East Tennessee State from the 10-minute mark really poured it on. Mr. Jennings for three. He had only five points in the first half. That is his eighth point of the ball game, well below his average of 18. He boosts the Buccaneers into a 16-point lead, biggest of the ball game, and he slaps the ball away from Gibson. Gibson touched it. It'll be East Tennessee State basketball. Oh, this really is a good old-fashioned kick, and game's really turned around from those first five minutes. But you know what's really impressive? This is a Cincinnati team that went to Minnesota and won in the Big Ten. That's a foul. A foul not called. It's not going to be called on the road in a big arena with 10,000 people. No, it is a great pass by Pelfrey, but look on these back. Look at him. He's got foul, but no call. Referee says no call. At the other end, Banks tied the three pointer. English cleared the glass, and here come the Buccaneers. Pelfrey having trouble getting the handle on the ball. Mr. Jennings faked his man Gibson into the air, and now he'll reset the offense. Buccaneers more of a half-court offensive team than a transition team under Allen LaForce. 
Bearcats will try and convert the turnover. Herbert Jones. Not a good foul by uh, Rodney English. Rodney English, there's one axiom that a lot of coaches talk about. Don't foul a jump shooter in his jump shot. First season at ETSU, but listen, Allen the Force is a veteran coach with the Buccaneers for several years. Don't foul the jump shooter. What coaches preach, don't foul that jump shooter. At Rodney English committed the mistake, and now uh, Jones, who's been really solid, especially in the second half, gets a chance to make uh, two free throws. It's only an eight point of the ball game. Make it nine for Herbert Jones, who averages 15 points a game. It's gonna be character time right now. Crucial part of the game, the last eight minutes, crucial because Cincinnati's really gonna turn up the intensity on the defensive end. Pelfrey, nice. into English. Good look, Pelfrey. Boy, what a strong game. He comes off that bench both times, and he really contributes. Hey, what you got? And very unselfish there. He had the open shot, but he saw the man open for the layup, and he got it to him. Robinson, that's his shot, and he knocks it down. Lavertis Robinson now the leading scorer in the ball game with 19 points. He's the only man in double figures for the Bearcats. Ooh, that's an offensive foul. Didn't get called. English. Oh, he gets the shot and the foul. Rodney English. Boy, that's a great look, but I'm going to tell you, Jerry Pelfrey gets away with one. Boom, that's an offensive foul. No call, but look at the pass inside. And Rodney English is able to get it down with a chance to go and get a three. You know, I'm not so sure that Herbert Jones didn't just oversell that foul. <laughs> I think he might have gotten the call, except it looked as if he was trying to convince the official that it was worse than it was. i tell you what, there are 10,000 people in here that didn't like the no call. But if you're a Buccaneer fan back home in Johnson City, you love it, you love it. Tennessee State has moved into a 17-point lead. Here's one reason why, Ron. Well, that's a great look right here. Major Gear, what a textbook pass to Marty Story for the bu for the bucket. What a great look because he was double. Look at the graphic right here, though. The three-point shooting, East Tennessee State. Well, Cincinnati adds one to their three-point total. Alan Jackson knocks home the three. It's 66 to 52. Jennings pass picked off by Gibson. Jackson, he'll try it again from the top of the key. This time it won't go. Bearcats control the rebound. Gibson will try it. Jones with the follow. There's Lavertis Robinson. And he called goaltender. Out on the fourth says, what, what do you mean? Let's take a look at it. You're going to see right there. I don't know where that was. I think he got his hand caught in the net. Maybe that was a call. And now we have a uh, foul on Terrence Gibson. 14 foul. Hey, Terry, you look for East Tennessee State to come in here and win like this against the Bearcats. they got to crack that top 20 this week. A lot of people around the South, especially the Southern Conference, believe it'll happen. Six and a half minutes yet to play in the game, though. Three-pointer. This time it's Alvin West. Boy, the Bearcat fans are seeing a really great shooting exhibition by the uh, East Tennessee Bucks in the second half. Jackson drives baseline. Robinson with yet another rebound, and the foul will go against Calvin Calford. Lavertis Robinson has had to carry this team on his back. He scored 21 points in the game, has nine rebounds, and he'll go to the free throw line here. You're going to see the rebound right here in the foul. And Lavertis Robinson, he, he shuffles those feet, but he gets away with it. But there's the foul, and he's going to get a chance to shoot, too. Hey, you know, we talked at the top of the show about uh, Cincinnati Bearcats defense. They've only given up about 64 points a game to their opponents. East Tennessee State's already eclipsed that with six minutes to go. So we were talking about how East Tennessee State scores 90 points a game. Whoever does their thing best tonight, and it looks like uh, the Buccaneers are going to win this game. So far, they have done their thing. They really have, and done it very well. Robinson now credited uh, officially with 22 points, and he can make it 23. He had 23 on Thursday night at Minnesota. 
talked to Mac McCarthy last night. Chattanooga lost at home against Alabama before. I said, hey, Mac, you scouting this game? He said, no, I'm going to go scout somebody I think I can beat. <laughs> <laughs> he sent an assistant coach up here to look at the Buccaneers. It'll be tough for anybody in the Southern Conference to beat the Buccaneers. It'll be exciting. Chattanooga has a several good players. Uh, you know, Furman's played a real strong schedule, and, and uh, Appalachian State, of course, really, really good team. It's going to be a great race, but the Buccaneers are the premier team. Mr. Jennings for three. Boy, they are really, really hot. What happened to that perimeter defense? A lot of gambling by the Bearcats, and uh, it's costing them. 11 of 22 for three-point range now for the Bucks. Marty Story goes up and brings down the rebound. It is a 72-55 lead. And we're, excuse me, Chad. And when you're a defensive team like the Bearcats and you emphasize defense, and uh, <laughs> you get kind of frustrated on offensive end, they're, they're just taking some terrible shots, not even coming close. I guarantee you, Bob Huggins will not be happy with the way his team has played in this ball game. And in case you tuned in late. Keep in mind, East Tennessee State was down 10 to nothing at the beginning of this game. Went almost nine minutes before they got a field goal. Also keep in mind, this Cincinnati team just barely lost to Kentucky. And uh, also Michigan State only beat them by two. Robinson will hit. You know, the attendance tonight, 10,233. One guy in attendance, Dr. Ronald Beller, the East Tennessee State president. Now, here's a guy who's from Cincinnati, coming back to his hometown. I suspect he's pretty happy. He showed his friends back home that his school can play some basketball. He's got a lot of talk about it. And a lot of his friends are leaving right now. They're going home. <laughs> Early exit. Gibson with the steal. Mr. Jennings steals it right back. Janice Shelton, also the athletic director from East Tennessee State, talked to us before the game. Good, that's pretty good following up here. Of course, they're way up in the top of this arena, and they're loving it. <laughs> yeah, they aren't bad seats when your team is up by 18, are they? Talford for three. Not this time. You see Bob Huggins says, I can't believe they missed the three. There's a rainbow by Banks, and Marty Story breaks down the rebound. 3.49 to play. That was a rainbow with a lot of cement on the end of it. No goal. Mr. Jennings calls timeout. Alan LaForce wants to talk about how they're going to approach the final three and a half minutes of the ball game. They lead it 75 to 57 to the Buccaneers. We'll be back at the Shoemaker Center in a moment. This is return to Johnson City, and of course, you'll be able to see it right here. Great guy. Done a good job cleaning up Raleigh, North Carolina. And there was a lot of slop over there, I tell you. Look at the three-point shooting. That's half of East Tennessee State's total. They have shot 50% from the three-point line. And that really has been uh, certainly one of the keys in the ball game. Don't forget, at the end of the game, we'll be selecting that Shoney's East Tennessee State player of the game, Rodney English, going up for the dunk. And the foul is called. Really good job, uh, Alan LaForce, in the timeout. Just, uh, you know what he said? Hey, guys, let's spread the floor and let's work a little bit on our uh, delay game. Take the clock down to about uh, six seconds and get a good shot. That's frustrating for a defensive team. They want the basketball. They want to sneak away, steal it, get it back. Buccaneers doing their thing a lot better tonight than the Bearcats. You know, we talked about that North Carolina State game. That's a 7 o'clock tip-off. So if you're going to the ball game, 7 o'clock. Or if you're going to tune in and watch it right here. Traveling call against Calvin Talford. He's not happy about that. But once again, Buccaneers lead it by 18, 3 minutes and 11 seconds to go. Don't forget, at the end of the game, we'll be selecting our Shoney's East Tennessee State player of the game, Calvin Talford. Certainly one of the guys up for that award. And it's going to be a tough one to choose. It'll be about four players. Gibson, it's slapped away by English. English gets it right in the face, and Gibson gets it back to the basket. Good 
Bearcats fouling quickly. Can almost give that player the game to that man. Look at Calvin. Let's see. Calvin. Oh, let's see. That was real close. Look at that face. He said, man, I'm throwing that thing out of here. It's not going to creep in over me. He's not going to let that weak stuff score on him. <laughs> Larry Ware slapping his hands. Going to put that ball in the hands of Mr. Jennings. He's a pro. Did you know he was a pro tennis player? Is he really? I tell you what, he's a better player than he is on camera at the top of the show. <laughs> I'm sure the people hadn't forgotten. Mr. Ware looked like he'd been sucking on persimmon. <laughs> that was an ugly shot. I'm going to tell him as soon as this game's over. <laughs> I'm sure even if you don't, he's going to hear about it now. Mr. Jennings hits both free throws. And here come the Bearcats. 2.52 to play. Robinson. That's a three-pointer for Lavertis Robinson. 27 points for Lavertis Robinson. Marty Story will kick it back out to Mr. Jennings. Buccaneers will try to run a little bit of clock. That's something they've really taken good care of the basketball in the last 10 minutes. Not too many turnovers. First five minutes, they turned it over four times. Well, they now have a total of 19 turnovers in the game, and that's about what you see averages uh, forcing its opponents. But they had seven at the half, and, I, you know, uh, four in the first few minutes of the second half. So they really have, because you've got to keep in mind, the Bearcats have really turned up the intensity defensively in the last few minutes because they've got to get the ball back. They've also cut the lead to 13 at 77-64. The Buccaneers will have to make their free throws. Well, you got the, yeah, and you got the man besides Pelfrey on the line right now that you want there uh, if you're going to try to make free throws. Exactly right. And the Buccaneers are a much better free throw shooting team than Cincinnati. That's the reason why. Well, anytime, this Mr. Jennings is a very valuable player because with the ball in his hand in a close game or with the Buccaneers in the lead, the ball's in his hands, I'm going to tell you it's automatic. Again, don't forget, December 29th, North Carolina State at East Tennessee State, a 7 o'clock tip-off as Mr. Jennings hits both free throws, 79-64. to 64. Jennings now with 15 points. Alan Jackson will miss the shot, and Keith Jennings will be called for the foul. And remember, Jennings got two personal fouls very early in the ball game and managed to stay in the game and stay effective nonetheless. You know why? Because he's smart. He's a very intelligent player. <laughs> you know, he knows his value to this team, and so he knew what he could do. Again, though, Terry, the zone, going to the zone really helped protect him also. That's the reason why I say we got to consider Allen a force for player to game. He did some smart things here tonight. Well, it's been exactly what you want out of the basketball team. It's been a team effort. It's not over. 79-66, a 13-point game. There's a turnover. Jackson for three. Nope. Joiner the rebound. Robinson, double clutch, got the basket, and he'll go to the free throw line. Well, you're right about one thing. It's not over. I might have had it over a few minutes ago, and a lot of Bearcat fans might be listening uh, uh, to, to their radio man going home, but this game certainly is not over, so you need to stay with us. Two minutes and four seconds to go. Indeed, it is not over. East Tennessee State, the lead now cut to 11, 79-68. We'll be right back. The guy who has kept the Bearcats in the ball game is the guy that's going to go to the free throw line, Lavertis Robinson. Robinson with 29 points tonight. That is a new career high for him. Alan LaForce pacing the sidelines. Says, let's keep calm. Two minutes and four seconds to go. It's an 11-point East Tennessee State lead. <laughs> You think Alan LaForce is calm? <laughs> I tell you what, this is getting down to what they call the old gut wrenching time. Robinson hits 30 points for him. The Buccaneers will have to bring it up against full court pressure. Calford. Nice play. Out to Eagles who missed the slam. Robinson. Buccaneers get the ball and the foul called immediately. Terry, the last trip down, Talford had the ball. They were really guarding. Mr. 
Mr. Jennings, they don't want the ball in his hands. That time he gets a corner, and now he gets fouled. He's going to get to go to the line, and boy, that's the last thing Bobby Huggins wants. Well, this could have proved to be costly. Really? Still proved to be costly. That should have been a guarantee, too, and English just didn't quite get the slam to go down. However, you see, quick convert, didn't score, and now Mr. Jennings at the free throw line where he hits. Bobby Huggins did not want the basketball in the hands of Mr. Jennings, but he was able to get that ball with the uh, rebound, and now he gets fouled. They got the foul. UC has got to foul the Buccaneers because they got the clock as their enemy. Major Gear coming into the ball game. You see him standing there. Jennings, an 88% free throw shooter, hits another one. He is 8 of 8 from the free throw line tonight. It is 81-69. That was Gibson, almost lost control on the way to the basket, but got it back. Here comes Mr. Jennings. Double team. Gets it to gear, but the foul is called on Michael Joyner. They're helpless. Jones and Huggins having a little screaming match going on. It's hopeless. It's hopeless. When Mr. Jennings has the basketball, you got to chase him down and catch him first to foul him, and then when you do, it's almost automatic. You know, Mr. Jennings in the first half had five points, very quiet offensively. Suddenly, Jennings with 17 is the leading scorer in the ballgame for the uh, Buccaneers, and he hits another free throw. Now nine of nine, Mr. Jennings. Well, there's several people that could be player of the game, but if you're talking about a most valuable player, it's Keith Jennings as far as the whole season, the whole program of East Tennessee Buccaneers. Gibson drives, too strong off the glass. The follow by Herbert Jones, and the lead is cut to 10. Minute 15 to play. Here, across the midcourt line, now to Jennings. That's the guy they want to handle the ball. Calvin Talford. And it is got to keep it away from the Bears, but they're going to have to foul. They've got to foul him. Lavertis Robinson called for the foul against Calford. They're doing a good job when Mr. Jennings has the ball of, of double team and trapping him and uh, making him give it up. But uh, boy, that time the Bearcats couldn't catch the pass because the Buccaneers did a good job of rotating the ball. The Buccaneers now will get two free throws for every foul as uh, Cincinnati is past the 10 foul limit. That, of course, a new rule this year. Alfred hits the first of those two free throws. Can't say it enough, though, Terry. This is a huge, huge win for the Buccaneers to come in here and beat a quality team like the Bearcats because they are potentially a top 20 team later in the season. Gibson for three. Jackson inside gets the rebound and the follow. And they uh -oh. forgot to cover Calvin Powell for the post. Oh, exclamation point. <laughs> what a great pass. So don't forget the pass from Marty Story. I'll tell you, Talford has had three big-time slams in this game. Robinson. And there's English for the rebound. Mr. Jennings. Could have taken it inside, decided to bring it back. Gear is open. Misses. English with the follow. Cincinnati try to catch up, but there's nothing the Bearcats can do about it now. 89-77, 10 seconds to play, as you see. The foul by Joyner. But the Buccaneers are going to walk away from this one, 8-1. and one. You know, Alan LaForce said before this game, if you had told me before the season we'd be 7-1, and one, even if we had had Greg Dennis, we wouldn't have believed it. Without Greg Dennis, they've still done it. They've done a great job. Our Shoney's East Tennessee State player of the game. We have all sorts of people to choose from, but we have decided to go with a guy who was sort of unsung, a guy we featured at the beginning of the game, Alvin West. Our Shoney's player of the game. West in this ball game so far, 14 points, very quiet, but he's contributed, and that's the kind of guy you've got to have if you're going to win ball games. The guy, you're right, Terry, and if the people in Johnson City are upset about that, that's what they get for having such a great team. Oh, you could have given that thing to five people. You could have easily given it to any of five people. Mr. Jennings, held three with 14 first half points, major gear, anybody. It is over. Alan LaForsen 
Bob Huggins shaking hands. The final score, East Tennessee State 90. Cincinnati 79, a big win for the Buccaneers. And now they'll head into that game with North Carolina State with an 8-1 and one record. We'll be back to wrap things up from the Shoemaker Center in Cincinnati right after this.